Welcome everyone to Music Canada's 2016 Annual General Meeting. It's my pleasure to introduce Minister Eleanor McMahon, Member of Par Ontario Provincial Parliament for Burlington, home of uh, Sony Music Canada's very own Walk Off the Earth. Uh, she was appointed as Ontario's Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport in June of this year. Like many of you, this was my first opportunity this afternoon to meet with Minister McMahon and we're very fortunate she could join us today. Throughout her career, she has shown passion and commitment to the councils and organizations for which she's served, and we're looking forward to working with Minister McMahon to continue to build Ontario's music sector. Please welcome Minister McMahon. Thank you, uh, Shane, for that uh, kind introduction. Uh, Geez, not many churchgoers in this crowd, eh? Everybody, the seats at front are empty. It's like being in church, no one wants to sit at the front. Um, but I'm just delighted to be here. You know, as, a, as a, someone in public life, I give a, a fair amount of speeches, as you might expect, but I was in caucus, which is our weekly gathering of colleagues and the government caucus, and all of the caucuses have them, and uh, I was sitting next to my colleague, Catherine McGarry, and I was reviewing my speech and making some last minute changes and she leaned over and said, what's that? And I said, well, I'm giving a speech to Music Canada. <laughs> Music Canada, how great is that? I said, I know, at a bar in Little Italy, I just might not come back, <laughs> right? So how many people get to give speeches uh, on a music stage surrounded by instruments? And uh, I'm sorry that I can't be here to hear Alex uh, later. I was delighted to meet him and to uh, hear about his dream and his journey um, to uh, music and and 10 years you told me that it took uh, for you to be discovered, and I think that's a common, a common theme, right? And uh, we're here to talk a little bit about people like you who've, who've, um, who've really spent a career and a life and a passion making the world a more beautiful place for people like me. So um, a gratitude is a little bit what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about you, and we're gonna talk, I think, about what we as government, working with all of you, working together, how we can make life better for Alex and make Alex more successful. And uh, so I'm, I'm just delighted to be here. And you know, we're in Little Italy. Allora, buongiorno, bienvenuti a tutti, allora. Uh, and uh, this was a Baptist church, right? You can tell that it was a church. Um, I'm, I'm at home in church, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, it was a Polish legion hall and today revival um, serves as a marquee destination of the arts. I had the pleasure of sitting with some of the board members at Music Canada. Um, I was early and so they took prompt advantage as well they should to have a conversation with me and I very much enjoyed that. I want to thank them for taking the time. And so with the Polish and the Italian and the a little bit of French and Irish and Scottish with me and all of you, and this is a very Canadian building, right? It's a melting pot. Um, but there's nothing more Canadian than bringing together a diversity of voices under the same roof, which is what people like you do every single day. So we're in a very appropriate forum for our conversation today on the Canadian music industry. And I'm proud, very, very proud to be part of that conversation. And I want to thank, um, you know, so many of you that I've had the chance to meet and work with in the early days of, of taking on this ministry for your warm welcome. Um, it's true that people say this is the ministry of fun and fitness. I get teased by my colleagues and when I got the job I talked to my three federal counterparts and to a person they said, don't tell anyone how much fun this is because your colleagues are going to resent you and, you know, and uh, we, we had a laugh about that. But, in reality, this is a business. This, this ministry is about an economic reality that includes all of you. So as much as it is fun and beauty and some esoteric stuff, it really is all about how as government, as I mentioned earlier, we can work with the industry, and that's all of you. So this is, this is fun, but it's also a very important economic reality. Um, I just want to start by, um, by showing credit um, and acknowledging that we're on the traditional territories of the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory and the Mississaugas of the New Credit and show respect for them today. As the first peoples in Ontario, the influence of Indigenous cultures on our province's heritage and identity are profound. And as we continue our work towards reconciliation, our relationship will guide us and help to shape our future. Ontario's music industry is an integral part of our culture as Canadians and a vital contributor to our economy. I would like to thank Music Canada and its members and associates for your considerable efforts to unite the music industry, 
identify innovative approaches to grow the sector, support our musicians, musicians like Alex, as they tell their stories, and provide valuable advice to government, to me, to us, as together we partner in promoting Canadian artists and the Canadian industry. Whenever I consider the importance of culture, I always begin with the importance of stories, our stories, stories that connect us as Canadians and as Ontarians, stories that contribute to our shared identity, stories that do more than simply describe the Canadian experience, but are an affirmation of who we are connecting us to our shared history. For me personally, as someone who grew up with music as a big part of my life, I also understand how it contributes to individual identities. I am the youngest of seven children. I'm proud to say every single child in my family had music lessons. All of us. We're like the Von Trapp singers, actually. Um, but we are the product of generous, hardworking parents. And make no mistake, my parents didn't have a lot of money. I grew up in Windsor, Ontario. My dad was not a worker. My mom worked at the hospital, um, university educated, mom and a leader, and 91 years old and going strong. But these were people who made tremendous sacrifices so that her kids, people like me, could have a well-rounded education that included music. And we, and now um, our kids, my nieces and nephews, all of whom play music or ensure that it's a vibrant part of all of our lives, are better for it. And so I like to tell that story because I think it illustrates the importance and the gift that music really is. And children having access to music, uh, I'm all about it because I saw what it did for me and the kids in my family. And virtually all of us still play an instrument. I have a piano in my living room. I play it often. I'm a vocal. I'm vocally trained, so I sing as often as I can. These days it's in the shower and in the car. Um, and not as, as, as much in a group as it used to be, but I took vocal lessons right up until university and I actually paid for them and worked to pay for them because I thought it was important. And so music was everywhere in our home. And in my case, singing with others, whether in a church choir, because let's face it, that's where a lot of this starts, or around a campfire taught me the value of personal expression, creativity, discipline, craft, as well as harmony and teamwork. Having the opportunity to express myself through music was integral for me to understand who I was growing up and who I am today. And so I understand that the importance of nurturing stories that foster our identities as individuals, as well as our identity as Canadians and Ontarians. But in saying that, I do not see a dividing line between nurturing those stories, our stories, and supporting our cultural sector. Our culture and our economy are inextricably linked. Now, at the risk of sounding like Captain Obvious, Right? Um, I think that's a very important thing for you to know in terms of the intent that we have as your Ontario government. And for me personally, those two things are inextricably connected. Our government recognizes the many opportunities for the province's music scenes to build up our cultural sector and our economy, to mobilize Ontario's wealth of talent and foster that competitive advantage, to mobilize our state-of-the-art production facilities, the wide range of venues, vibrant festivals, live music, with the aim to make it Canada's largest and one of the wor world's most diversified music jurisdictions. You know, when I was talking to Alex, when we just met briefly, he was telling me about his journey to Canada and his parents' journey to Canada, and it's one of multiculturalism, right? And again, that is our strength and our advantage. And our government is committed to strengthening the province's position as a global leader in music to drive investment to our province and support for our artists. Et notre gouvernement est déterminé à renforcer la position de chef de file mondial de la province dans la musique pour favoriser les investissements dans notre province et soutenir nos artistes. A number of months ago, as one of my first official duties as minister, I had the pleasure of launching Ontario's first culture strategy. The strategy represents the culmination of a broad consultation effort that heard from thousands of Ontarians from across our province, including Music Canada. It will guide the government's support for the culture sector over the next five years. It aims to promote participation in arts and culture, build on the sector's economic impact, and help Ontarians tell their stories and express themselves. Of particular relevance to all of you today, is the fact that the strategy commits the government to continue to build Ontario as a leading North American centre for music production and performance. 
as well as spur music tourism by continuing to develop the Ontario Live Music Strategy, which I'll speak about shortly. Ontario's culture strategy is more than just a blueprint for collaboration. It is an investment strategy designed to help nurture our communities, our economy, and our reality. Personally, I'm excited to start working with partners and communities to implement the culture strategy. I had the pleasure of working with Michael Koto, my predecessor, who worked with all of you to develop the strategy, and it's my job and my unique pleasure and privilege to now begin to execute on the elements of that strategy. As I just mentioned, along with the cultural strategy, we will, we will be working in partnership with the sector to further develop Ontario's live music strategy. The strategy's goals are to strengthen Ontario's live music industry and make this province a premier destination for live music. We developed a live music brand and created a music portal. I'm sure you know it, ontariolivemusic.ca, to promote Ontario's con concerts, festivals, and events because we understand that live music draws tourists from around the world to Ontario. As we continue to develop our live music strategy, we'll, we will strengthen this alignment with our strategic framework for tourism. So when people talk to me about tourism and culture and sport, they sometimes scratch their head and they say, huh? <laughs> okay, so how does that work? In reality, they often, there's a confluence of events which sees them comes together. And in this particular instance, I think I can echo uh, that sentiment, right? The, uh, the strategy that's coherent in terms of our tourism draw, the artists that draw people to live and invest and work here are all interconnected. By increasing collaboration between government, industry, and other partners, the strategy will identify opportunities to develop and grow Ontario's live music industry and help to expand opportunities for musicians to perform and to thrive across Ontario. I'd like to recognize Music Canada's significant role in helping to create Music Canada Live, a live music industry association which will have an important role in developing the live music strategy I mentioned a few moments ago. I mentioned too that Music Canada is a recipient of Ontario Music Fund support. You also saw the value in such a fund for the industry as a whole and helped us in its development. Thank you. With the Ontario Music Fund, we did something truly unique in Canada. And now I understand from our conversation earlier that others are looking to replicate that. It's a competitive advantage that we created for you. It's about you, but it's also about that competitive advantage I talked about earlier because you operate in a global environment. And for us to, to keep up, in fact, I was told today that we're head and shoulders above, and I like to hear that, but we don't want to rest on our laurels. So the fact that BC and Alberta and Quebec are looking at replicating this, to me, is, is all about, it's that old saying, right? Um, imitation is the highest form of flattery. And all of you should take an enormous bow for that because it was your work, your passion, and your input that drove that strategy, so thank you. We're the first to have a dedicated fund working to leverage the talent and economic opportunities specifically within the province's music industry. Today, other jurisdictions, including BC, as I mentioned, and our federal government are looking to Ontario as a model for their support of the music industry. Working in collaboration with the sector, we were able to craft a fund that supports Ontario's music industry, increasing music production and performance activity in Ontario, creating opportunities for emerging artists, I think I just met one of those, right? And music businesses, encouraging innovation, and magnifying the economic impact of the sector overall. Francophone, Aboriginal, and culturally diverse communities and musical genres get a needed boost to help them expand their audiences. There has been significant and encouraging demand for the fund since its launch, and that's a good thing. Initially a three-year initiative, the 2015 Ontario budget made the fund a permanent recurring grant program. To date, the Ontario Music Fund has contributed over $42 million to the music industry. 244 applications from 220 companies, resulting in over 1,200 full-time equivalent jobs, supporting events attended by 1.6 million people, and it goes on, giving a platform to more than 1,900 Ontario artists. That's incredible, to show the world what they do best. In just a few years, we've been able to translate the goals of the Ontario Music Fund into real tangible impact for artists and industry. I'd like to once again thank Music Canada for its ongoing support for my ministry's music initiatives. 
and its vital role in, in working with recording labels to ensure that the fund continues to work effectively in supporting our music industry. Music Canada has done stellar work in nurturing the Canadian stories that I started talking about, sung by Canadian voices, and sharing them with the joy that music brings out in all of us. On behalf of the Government of Ontario, I'd like to thank all of you for your efforts to ensure our stories reach the ears and the hearts of fans in Ontario and beyond. Most of all, I want to thank you for the joy that you bring to people's lives, to their physical and mental health, of all the things you do. Those are amongst the most priceless. Finally, for the vital role that you play in Ontario's economy and the role that you play as a vital partner to our government, many, many thanks. In closing, please accept my very best wishes for a successful AGM. Grazie, muchas gracias, merci, miigwech. Thank you very, very much. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to uh, thank the minister uh, for, for coming and uh, just to add some of my own personal reflections on, on uh, it's not an extensive relationship that we have so far, but uh, I have to say it's one that uh, has uh, been characterized, uh, at least on my side, by um, a very real sense of just how um, passionate you are uh, about this portfolio that you've taken on and uh, to listen to you speak about you know your the, the foundation uh, of music in your life uh, I, I've heard that before and, and I can see uh, you know what that is bringing not just to you know your, your life personally but also to your your public persona and your your life as a politician um, for for those of us in the music industry uh, it's absolutely essential that we have a minister uh, that believes in the power of music uh, to change society. And I think you do because it changed you. Um, and uh, the other uh, great um, uh, sort of uh, treasure that I discovered on our first meeting was you believe in music education too. Uh, and as you know, this has been a, uh, as folks in this room will know, for, for Music Canada and our members, um, uh, supporting music education, extolling its benefits, uh, and, and extending its reach uh, is central to who we are and what we do. And we're really hoping to have a partnership with the provincial government on this in, in this regard, uh, because we also know that right across the country, it's, it's being eroded, uh, it's under attack. Um, and, uh, and I think that we, all of us in this room, uh, owe it to ourselves to, uh, to support any endeavor that's going to uh, to support education. Um, I, I, I think that you would agree with me that, um, you know, it, now that we know scientifically as, as well as sort of impressionistically, the power of music to change and, and grow young minds, how can we throw that away? But we are. Um, so, uh, I thank you for that, and I hope you're going to be an advocate and, and, and bring that along. Uh, you also have uh, got a deep and nuanced understanding. We, we discovered that upstairs today of the, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the Ontario Music Fund and the role that it plays, its groundbreaking role, uh, not just in Canada, but really in the world. Um, and uh, I know that you also share a belief with us that the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport is an economic ministry. And in our view, this is not a junior ministry. This is a ministry that should be thought of as a senior ministry, a senior economic ministry, treated as such, uh, and accorded a position at the cabinet table uh, that, that goes with the enormous impact uh, that the cultural community has on our world. And, uh, you talked a lot about stories, uh, and um, I was having a conversation with a with a friend of mine who I see at the back here about um, you know the, the the importance of music in sort of telling our stories, and uh, he was pointing out to me that that one of the great things about uh, about supporting music uh, is that it creates what he calls a double dividend. Um, it creates a material asset, intellectual property, 
which is owned by Canadians and is exportable and enhances that side. But it also creates a cultural asset which allows Canada to share its stories and its personality and its identity with the world. So supporting music and supporting culture uh, brings that double dividend, which very, very few others do. So thank you.